Now, the work and span laws tell you something about the minimum possible time. But I want you to ask yourself a more interesting question. Is there an upper bound on the time to execute the DAG? The answer is yes, according to a theorem by Richard Brent. Now, I love Brent's result. I think it's really cool and really elegant. Personally, I think you can get a lot of insight into parallel algorithms by rederiving it. And you can do so without a lot of uh, work. Now, having said that, there are a bunch of steps involved, so I'm going to break this derivation into two parts, and we'll have a small quiz in between. So we have a DAG with a certain amount of work and a particular span. Just as a reminder, our goal is to estimate an upper bound on its execution time. Now, suppose I give you a PRAM with P processors, and let's say you run the DAG. Now, let's imagine we're doing some forensic analysis, and we go back and we look at the execution of the DAG on the PRAM. Let's break up that execution into phases, where each phase satisfies three conditions. The first condition is that each phase has exactly one critical path vertex. Note that this condition immediately implies that there have to be d of n phases. So let's say I've numbered the critical path vertices from 1 to d of n. Then this condition implies that there will be d of n phases. So here's a cartoon of what the phases might look like. Now since the critical path vertices are numbered, and there's one critical path vertex per phase, then I can number the phases by the critical path vertex number. So for example, here's critical path vertex 2, so I'll call this phase, phase 2. Okay, that's the first condition. What about the second? The second condition is that all non-critical path vertices within a phase are independent. Let me show you what I mean. Let's take any phase with its single critical path vertex, like this one. Now consider any non-critical path vertices that have been assigned to this phase. These vertices can only have edges that enter the phase or exit the phase, but they can never depend on one another. So for example, this is OK, but a dependence like this would not be allowed. Now this condition is always possible to satisfy, and a good exercise is to see if you can figure out why. As a hint, just think about paths and the fact that the critical path vertex lies on the longest path. Now there's a third condition, which is that every vertex has to be in some phase. And furthermore, it should only be in one phase. So suppose this is our DAG, and let's say we've divided it into phases. Now every phase k will have some number of vertices associated with it. Let's say that number is wk. And this value wk will include the critical path vertex. So by this third condition, which says that every vertex has to appear in exactly one phase, what does that imply? It basically tells us if I add up the wk's across all the phases, then I should get the total number of vertices. That is, the sum of wk for k goes from 1 to d should be w. OK, here's a question for you. How long will it take to execute phase k? Let's call that time tk. Now, if I have wk units of independent work, which I get from condition 2, then that tells me that the total time to execute phase k should be ceiling of wk divided by p. And that in turn implies that if I sum over all phases, then the total time is just the sum of these tk's. So plugging in tk, we get this summation. OK, I know what you're thinking. This seems really unhelpful. Are we any closer to achieving our goal? And mathematically, these ceilings are really ugly, and can we make them go away?